Welcome to the third annual Monadnock International Film Festival. My name is Bill Smith and this is the Radar Marketing Group Glass and Gear Interviews. And my guests are Anthony and James Gaudioso. Yes. And you guys have uh, put together a movie. You wrote and directed this movie. Did you direct together? Or is we it did. Yeah, okay, we so you both directed. And uh, um, both of you star in the movie. The movie is called The Ghost and the Whale. Tell us a little bit about this movie. Well, The Ghost and the Whale is essentially about a man who goes out to sea with his wife and when he returns she's not with him and you have half the town thinking that he did something scandalous and then you have the other half of the town who kind of believe him and empathize with him and we added in uh, as a subplot that he's kind of been off of medicine for a very very long time so he's working through all of those different uh, intricacies throughout the course of the film uh, whilst her family is seeking revenge. So it's, it's the, 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 the time clock is there, it's ticking on this man. So a reporter comes into town, it's covering a story, I'm going to put that loosely in quotes, and uh, James, you play the part of the reporter. Yes, it comes in, and and this this story uh, um, isn't really the story that he's covering, but he comes in under the guise that he's going to be covering a, a story about birds. Uh, yes, uh, that uh, he's covering the fiftieth anniversary, uh, the semi-centennial anniversary of the filming of the birds, which uh, also took place in that town. And the timing was exactly fifty years to the day. Exactly fifty yeah, years to yeah, the day. To the month. To the day. Yeah. yeah. And in the film is. Tippy Hedren. Which is awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. And there's a salute to the crow as well at the in the opening scene. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And how did you shoot that with the, the crow? Uh, well, the, uh, the that was actually, uh, it was a CGI bird. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we talked about many things. We talked about getting a, you know, a puppet and talked about, you know, all the, these different the things. Bird trainer. Yeah. A bird, yeah, bird whisperer. And... Uh, <laughs> Who we found it at the end of the day, it would be because it was being shot from kind of you know, yeah. a little bit farther away. Right, that's great. I was going to say bird's eye, and then I was like, I'll get kicked out of the room for a chance. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's you know, and so, uh, early enough to get those lines out. Exactly. Um, so, so this reporter comes into town and he's doing a story, but in reality, he's researching this person that you talked about. That the the story of this this gentleman that went off to sea and his wife didn't come back. He's attempting to get closer to this story, and, and as he starts to peel the layers back, more and more is revealed, and uh, his life is, is, is subsequently put in danger from, from his now uh, very, very exposed position in town. Mm -hmm. So a big part of this movie is the whale. Right. Tell yes. us about the whale. Uh, the whale is played by Jonathan Price, and it is... Uh, our protagonist, Joseph, it's his inner monologue, his inner voice, and uh, it's everything, I believe, from his uh, guilt to his insecurities to um, just his uh, subconscious working itself out. And uh, it's the byproduct of this reporter that I played coming into town and finding a man who suffers from bipolar, who's now been a year removed from taking his medicine, and on top of that is depressed and forlorn after the, the death of his wife. And it almost seems, and this whale, by the way, the CGI, and, and that's great. Thank you. And the whales, uh, you know, it's it's very cool the way that you guys have done it. You know, in some scenes where he's sitting there, you know, at nighttime, and this whale's got his head coming out of the water, and he's talking to him. So it's 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 a very you know picturesque cinematic look to it. It's very cool. Thank you. But thank you. This whale is to me, I sort of see it as his connection to to his one of the connections to his wife. It like is. he almost doesn't want to stop the conversation because if he does, he, you know, this, that connection to his wife. At least yeah. that's how I read it. I no, no, it, and that's how you know uh, we crafted it together too. Is is the whale is uh, obviously a metaphor, but it's also very, very symbolic of that day, the occurrence. So yeah. you know because you've seen the film what happens, but uh, the whale plays a, a, a bigger role in his subconscious because it's it's his whale of guilt, it's his whale of shame. You know, this, this just insurmountable burden that yeah. he has to take on throughout the course of the film. And, and it's also him trying to, uh, in his subconscious uh, mind,
trying to work out really what happened, trying to find his courage, trying to find his strength. The whale will uh, continue to do that throughout the film, ask him the right questions. And Jonathan Price's voice is perfect. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's, no, we were very, very fortunate. soothing, sort of British. You know, it's a, right. it was excellent, very eloquent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just he sent us a couple of takes. I think every take we would use every take. So yeah. <laughs> he's got one of those voices. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. very good. And uh, so the <clears throat> the movie has a lot of plots, twist changes, right. a lot of uh, sort of um, you're not quite sure what's going on next. New characters get revealed. I think one of the funnest things about watching this movie, knowing that you guys made this movie and started the movie, is the characters that you play because you you guys are twins. Yes. And you play two characters in the movie, but no one would know that. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, you right. can tell me a little bit about your character. My character. Um, I'm just going to start a little bit before that. We had uh, we had come off a, a, another film where James. Uh, played this brilliant character. You know, he he lost a ton of, of weight, and it was uh, just this wild, wild character. And I had played more of a um, kind every of man. middle of the road, yeah. every man guy, and I was like, not on this one. I want to do something a little bit wild and crazy. And so we just kind of switched positions because he he wanted to do something a little bit more stoic. And so he took the role of Ed on, and I took the role of Jack Lee on. So Jack is the Jack is the alpha of the Lee family, and he's been sent away for a, a, a terrible crime. And the film picks up where it, it, the film, as the film picks up, it, it really marks his arrival back into town. And he's just a he cares about he, he actually cares about his sister greatly. And so you get the sensation, the feeling that he's doing this for all of all the wrong things for all the right reasons. So <clears throat> you made him sound very eloquent, but he's a bad dude. He's very bad. He's, very <laughs> he's bad. a very bad dude. Uh, he's very bad. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he's uh, and you you did a bit of a transformation to, I did, to yeah. be in that part. You, his character's bald. He's bald. Uh, he's got beard. a yeah, pretty long shaggy beard. He's got scars and tattoos, and his eye is all messed up, and his voice is really low. But I, I found it fun. I thought it was a you know doing yeah. the. I think doing the louder characters is, is easier for us, uh, because we are so gregarious and and silly and with our writing, and then also just kind of in in real life. So that's closer for us than. And I'll take that any day of the week. You know, before it's like, hey, you're gonna play Phil the accountant. It's like, oh man, uh, <laughs> it's like, you know, I want to play the wild, the wild one. The character roles are often more, yeah, you know, more, yeah, well, because, because, oh, yeah, it's yeah, so layered, yeah. and you can, you know, you do yeah. so much with your wardrobe and your costume, yeah. and your, you know, he had a uh, a fake eye and yeah. uh, you know scars and you know that all very that type of stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, was, you know, and you gained some weight for it too as well. I did. Yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, I, th I think I walk around uh, probably closer to. To, to about 40, 45 pounds less than, than what he weighed in at. So I was, a lot of the people there said, oh, you're so, you're so big. Is that you, did you lose weight for this? But I, the truth is I just gained weight for that. So I gained about 45 pounds. Wow. Yeah, over the course of three months. I, I didn't have much, much time, but it was, uh, we, I didn't know anybody a lot of else. pizzas and ice cream and things like that? Yeah, well, I tried to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's how you put it on fast. I tried to That's just... To do it the best way that I possibly could, and then went to the gym a lot. So yeah, yeah. So what's interesting because you guys are twins and brothers. Um, there was a great scene in there where your characters are, are you know, you're protecting the family, and, and you're investigating the the story, and uh, uh, you're feeling intimidated by his presence and and wanting him to go and that kind of thing. Won't give away the whole plot, but <laughs> there's a point where you're 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 backing up. Oh, okay. and then oh, all yeah. of a sudden you you see you in the background, literally um, right behind each other. So right. it's sort, sort of a, a of a almost a portrait of both of you guys right next to each other. We split, yeah. Try yeah. to split the, the frame as much as possible, which is yeah. very cool. I mean, in so uh, many levels because yeah, it's, it works in the movie, but also you know the fact that you guys are brothers and twins right. and. and it's almost a good twin, bad twin thing. I don't know. It's just, no, no, it's the yin and yang, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And there was some concern there too because. Again, obviously, Dr. Would you look? Would you recognize the, yeah. the resemblance? Would you, would you recognize that? Because yeah. we're twins, and we do look. Uh, 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 we do have um, differences, obviously, like every twin does. But when you're right next to each other in the frame, 
you know, it's hard not to tell that. So if you know that we're twins, then you'll go, oh, there's James and Anthony. But if you don't, and to the people who I don't know, know they would know, or, yeah. or weren't aware yeah. that we were twins, they didn't know. Jack is so distinct. Yeah. His character, Jack Lee, is so yeah, distinct. And, completely, you know, completely different. So to, to me, it almost seems like the antagonist in this movie is medication in a way. <laughs> I mean, it, it, I was looking at it because there's this, you know, sort of running theme. That he befriends the the, the, the character that is um, off of his meds ends up befriending a pharmacist yeah. uh, who also right. has medical, bipolar. Yeah, yeah, who's also bipolar, <laughs> and so it's convenient. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. But there's but there's this sort of uh, it, it almost seems like that that a lot of the, um, uh, of of what was happening was happening because of I guess it wasn't happening because of those issues, but it, it was seemed to be reflecting in the story a lot. So. Yeah. What made you decide to go that route with, with uh, you know, using uh, depression and bipolar as a, as a sort of a subplot to the story? We had, to, um, we had the fortune of working with Paula Bernard and Maurice Bernard on this. And Maurice uh, has bipolar disorder. And so I, we, had, we were able to sit down with him and... and talk to him and, and he was very open and extremely cool and as you saw as you saw from the film he's very very talented very strong actor he was able to just kind of talk to us about the the um well about his experience with it what he's gone through the highs the lows what it feels like and for us or for me when i was going through the script it was very important to i'm sure it's not good every time i hit that but for me it was very important Every time I go through, or every time I went through, to strengthen the subplot. So, to, to have this character further away from reality, uh, by you know proxy of, of cycling off of his medication, it, it it got us closer to who he was and and, and and what he was up against. So that's really how the medication came in. It was yeah. uh, to honor uh, our lead actor yeah. and. Uh, to shed some light on bipolar disorder. So, yeah. yeah. Mm. It was excellent casting for the lead. Too. Yeah, no, he's, he's a fantastic guy. He's a buddy of ours and, yeah. and extremely cool. And they would be here. Yeah. They're, they're at all of the film festivals, but they were across the country at another film festival. Yeah. So, yeah. He had those eyes that just, you know, I know. You just yeah. kind of looked yeah. and thought, wow, this, this guy's got, I mean, that obviously he's, he's a good actor because he's convincing. You yes. Know, that, that, yeah. Right. You know, that he's got some stuff going on there. <laughs> yeah, there's a darkness to, uh, to Maury. When you talk to Maury, I mean, he's such a good guy, but there's a, like, you know, there's a heaviness to the those brooding, eyes. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. When he's, he's sitting on the nothing. rocks, that was my favorite stuff of him. When he's sitting on the rocks, actually, with Monica, uh, right. and they're just talking about it. She says, what happened to your wife? And he just starts talking about it, and you can tell it's just coming straight from his heart yeah. and not his mouth, and he, he, he killed it. Mm -hmm. He's excited. So yeah. important. So where are you guys taking this film in terms of uh, where is it going next? Are you trying to get distribution for it? And we are, yeah. We're, we're, we're trying to, uh, absolutely trying to get distribution for the film, and it's, it's just now been kind of released and out there. Uh, the film, uh, we're fortunate enough, the film was profiled a couple weeks back on Oprah, and she did a special on uh, Maurice Bernard, and uh, they're very good friends, and uh, she found out that they were... Um, uh, the Bernards were working on this film with us and uh, decided to profile the film and so nice. we're hoping that that attention and some of the attention that it's gotten at the festivals will kind of uh, beget distribution you know that's the goal is to kind of put art, art out there and have it be seen yeah yeah we did an interview last week um, with Erin Biglow who, who is uh, one of the founders of WordPress so she's pushing it and then or she's actually just did a story on us and then we did an interview with AXS the week before that and now it's really starting to pick up some great momentum at the yeah. festivals and got to meet you yeah. and good times. <laughs> we'll promote it. Yeah. 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 Uh, 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 well it's a, it's a great film. It's a it's a fun film you. to watch. It's it, it's and, and and you know, the fact that you filmed it fifty years after the birds in Bodega Bay. Right. But it, it has a very Hitchcockian feel to it, and it's, it's oh, fun. Yeah. They, they, the the twists and turns, and the and, the, yeah. and the, the characters, and the and the surroundings. And stuff. Yeah, it's, it's a, wild too when you go yeah. there. It's all right there. All of that stuff that he shot for the birds, the 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 uh, cliffs and the sand dunes, and you know that stuff that happened with Rudy and, yeah. and James. Some of that. It's like all there. It's, it's a really cool place, Bodega Bay and Dillon Beach. And, 
Yeah, it was great. Uh, I think what I found really unique, too, is that if you watch the birds, you know, the birds opens up and, and uh, you know, you have a couple of scenes uh, in the city and then uh, to the Edrin's character, Melanie Daniels. And if you notice in the film, her name is Melanie Daniels as well. We spoke right. about that on set and she said, I think that I think that Melanie stayed in town and married Mitch Brenner. So we called her right. Melanie Brenner in the film. Uh, so the uh, character of Mitch right. comes down the stairs and says, oh, it's okay, Miss Brenner, it's all right. So we kind of were carrying on her character. She, she was just very cool. A doll, yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. amazing. And she wore the jewelry that she wore in the birds. She said, I right. wore this necklace and this ring in the birds. And 50 years ago, to the month, almost to the, I think to the day. That's right, great. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, she totally got into it, so that was fun. That's yeah. neat. Yeah, it was fun to have her there, and, and they really brought the Hitchcockian theme there, you know what I mean? Right. The, oh, locals, the locals loved it, you know, having uh, Tippy come out, and they all showed right. up and said, oh, my God. And, yeah, I bet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. still have a gift shop when you walk in, uh, you know, these birds come down at you, and <laughs> they have all the, all the pictures, and, you know, her poster. But it's been 50 years, so now yeah. it's like an old bird that's like, Arr! Yeah, yeah it's, like, it's like, oh, <laughs> it's not dusty. Yeah, 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 it's all dusty. Dusty, is, dusty, dusty, dusty bird. Bird. And then like a, a poster of a Hitchcock just goes <laughs> yeah. But it's cool, it's a special place <laughs> I can remember that, that I mean I'm older than you guys But as a kid watching that movie And seeing uh, the one scene that just stuck in my head as a kid That was just like, you know Emblazed in my brain was There was a scene where there was a bird Poking, poking the eyeball out of a uh, somebody's head or something like that. Right. It's just yeah. like, oh my god! Oh you know? yeah, the famous scene with uh, Jessica Tandy finding the farmer and right. the eyes. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. it's yeah. creepy. Oh, it's Jessica Tandy. In there. Jessica Tandy's in oh, the wow. film as well with uh, Rob Taylor and Suzanne Plachet and uh, yeah. another really phenomenal actress, uh, which is uh, um, Veronica Cartwright from Aliens and Witches of Eastwick, and she was the child in that. Ah, okay. Yeah. Oh right. wow! Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, there was some cool stuff there. Yeah. Absolutely. So what, what's next for you guys? Do you have another, are you working on more scripts? We've got another movie coming out. We do. do. Thanks for asking. We have, uh, we, James and I got together and wrote this script called Numb. And we've been working on it for many years. And we're going to wind up teaming up with, well, we've teamed up with Matt Russell. So he's going to wind up directing it. And Mark Mathis, who's the, who was the producer of Precious, and Brick, and Waitress, I believe. Uh, I was thinking Big Sur, but yeah, those the uh, Precious right. and, and Big Sur and, and Brick, and so we're excited about that. That'll be the next project, and uh, just wrote an animated film as well. So nice, that's, yeah. that's a lot of fun. That one's called Coins. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff on that. We, we have a slate of stuff. Uh, yeah, our our next film is is Numb, and again, like Anthony said, it's the producers of Precious, and yeah. and uh, they saw this this last film and said. I'd like to do um, a, pro a collaboration with you, so we're excited about that. It's a gritty human condition piece, and Great. I think it's right up our alley. It's and, gritty, shocker. You know, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think it'll be a very, yeah, it'll be a shocker right. when we do a comedy. Who's going to have the meaty role on this one? Uh, is it going to go back? The <laughs> yeah. You know, it's the, the more character -y role one yeah. is switching again and going this way, yeah. and he's playing more of the every man, right? right. The right. straight guy, you know, the straight right. man character. It's very yeah. female driven. This yes, film. very very uh, female driven. So. Uh, need two really really incredible ingenues so yeah. the hunt begins looking forward to seeing it when it absolutely. comes out absolutely <laughs> absolutely <laughs> thank you for having us yeah well thank you yeah. for coming and good luck to you guys awesome. thank you yeah. so much thanks thanks for watching thanks it twice so too yes. yeah. <laughs> thank you <laughs>